Hi. Over the past, I've talked a lot about observability and event-driven GitOps, kind of bringing GitOps to the next level. You could also call it modernizing delivery and operations through SLOs. I really want to show you what GitOps is all about and how we can expand it and make it better so that whatever you try to deploy actually adheres to your SLOs. My name is Andy Gradner. Check it out what I have to say. So let's get started. What you're really going to learn today is what is GitOps? Because for me, it's really ensuring technical desired state. The second thing is you want to go beyond GitOps. It's actually ensuring the business desired state, not just technical what you want, but you really want to, what you want to achieve with your application from a business perspective. And then I want to show you what Dynatrace Cloud Automation does to actually bring observability at the center stage into the driving seat of your GitOps adoption. So let's get started. What is GitOps and where are its natural boundaries? GitOps, from my perspective, right, this is my definition, it's technical desired state management. What does this mean? You have a technical desired state that you express in a declarative way. Your um, deployment YAMLs, whatever, your number of pods, your number of VMs, you basically declare what your infrastructure should look like, your hosts, your pods, your nodes, and all this stuff. You put it into version control, right? This is where Git comes in. You are versioning and making it immutable, which means you have a history of all of your defined and desired state from a technical perspective. Then you have tools, and there's many, right? I just put a couple. Um, there might be others that you're using right now, but there's tools that get triggered when your technical desired state changes, when you commit a change into your Git saying you want to scale up, you want to scale down, you want to change the version of your uh, service, then it may trigger a Jenkins pipeline, a GitHub pipeline, Azure DevOps, whatever it is, or you have GitOps operators like Argo or Flux that are watching it. What these tools then do is they're always making sure, they're always making sure that your technical desired state that you've specified in Git is actually what is applied, let's say in your target platform like Kubernetes. And if it's out of sync, it tries to sync it. Either when it changes on the Kubernetes side, it syncs it back or when you have a new change in Git, always like a reconciliation loop. So what does this do? First of all, what it does, it ensures that your technical desired state is met. What you want to deploy is actually deployed. How you want your infrastructure to look like is what your infrastructure actually looks like. From a Kubernetes perspective, if you're implementing your health endpoints correctly, your readiness and your liveliness probes, Kubernetes as a platform also makes sure that your pods are always healthy. In case they're unhealthy, they get recycled. In case a node gets unhealthy, they're getting moved over. You know all the things, you know, you know how Kubernetes works. So this is great. However, what it doesn't tell you is whether your business desired state is met, whether you're still meeting your SLOs and SLAs after you are scaling up, you're scaling down, or you moved from one version to another. It also doesn't tell you if application is actually ready and accessible from your end users. Kubernetes only tells you if your readiness and liveliness probes are running and the pods are healthy from within your environment. Right? So there's a couple of question marks that you have. So this is where now I want to tell you how you can go beyond GitOps from technical to business desired state management driven and with observability. So coming back to the picture I had before, right? I don't need to kind of reiterate here, but what we add is the observability layer. And in my case, obviously it's Dynatrace. So you, you would install Dynatrace and let it monitor and observe continuously, not only one Kubernetes clusters, but all of your Kubernetes clusters. And if you have something beyond Kubernetes, which I'm pretty sure most of you organizations have out there, your VMs, um, your other applications, your serverless functions, your cloud native that runs somewhere in a hosted SaaS service, you continuously observe it to know how are your end users currently using your software? Are you meeting your SLOs? And what's the health of your underlying infrastructure, whether it's owned by you, whether it's somewhere running on bare metal, on VMs, or as part of containers? Then we also add Dynatrace Cloud Automation, which is heavily inspired by the open source CNCF project captain. So now let me show you how things change now. We still have the change in desired state. You know, for instance, say you want to update from one version to another version of your service. So you update your desired state configuration. You update those deployment YAML files. 
you commit the changes to Git. And once they are committed, then your GitOps tool, your CI CD pipeline, whatever tool you have that watches for the change or watches for the trigger is then becoming active. But instead of directly applying it to the target system, we now go a level up. I mean, in my slides, it's a level down, but really what it means is before just blindly applying it, we notify Dynatrace Cloud Automation. Dynatrace Cloud Automation can now do pre-deployment evaluations because just because somebody says, I want to deploy a new version doesn't necessarily mean that your target environment is ready. Maybe you're out of error budget. Maybe your environment is not healthy. So Cloud Automation will talk to Dynatrace, look at the observability data, collect additional evidence, and then present it to you and saying, do you really want to deploy because your environment is currently not healthy? Or do you really want to deploy in, you know, potentially jeopardizing your error budget and your SLAs? So the first step is before blindly applying, we can do pre-deployment evaluations. If everything is green or if we invoke and let's say send a notification, ask for permission to a human being and they say everything is good, we pass control back to your tools that you have that then actually can apply the change. But just applying the change and deploying the new version and waiting for the pods until they're recycled and updated is not the end of the story. Because after we deploy, we want to do post-deployment evaluations. This is where in a pre-production environment, cloud automation will trigger your tests and then evaluate the test results. Or in a production deployment, Dynatrace Cloud Automation would evaluate your SLOs. Do you still meet your availability requirements? Do your users still use your software as they were before? And do you have any problems? If everything is good, great. If not, then you know, maybe roll back. If everything is good, we can obviously also then promote it, which is also a nice thing if you promote it from one stage to the next. Now, this means that you can now also answer the questions, are we meeting our business desired state? Meaning when you deploy and after you deploy it, are you within your SLOs and your SLAs? And also are your applications really ready? Because Dynatrace uses observability data from your real users, from your infrastructure continuously and tells you whether your applications are really accessible from the outside world. A big tip here is also to combine this also with some synthetic tests, especially right after the deployment. Now, in case something happens later on, Dynatrace, because Dynatrace continuously observes and monitors, and a problem happens, Dynatrace notifies that there's an impact. You know, and again, it could be a performance impact, it could be an availability impact, it could also be that a new vulnerability was detected from Dynatrace AppSec, and now you do have an impact, which means cloud automation takes this information, is then orchestrating and calling all of the tools that should be involved to, let's say, roll back to the previous version by making a configuration change or notifying the right people that there is a vulnerability and you need to update those vulnerable libraries or get the development team on board to fix the problem and provide a solution. And once the solution is ready, then they would again go through the same cycle. You see, it's like a really nice loop now where we have everything in place all the checks and balances, all the additional SLO validation. So that at the end, you can say GitOps really is at a new stage, which means your technical desired state is not only met, but you also meet your business desired state. Your applications are always ready and you're always within your SLIs and SLOs. In case something happens later on, like an external event, end users are not behaving as expected, you have a vulnerability, something is strange, your observability tool, Dynatrace in this case also becomes an input giver and a trigger point for your GitOps change and your GitOps lifecycle. So, brings me to cloud automation. I mentioned cloud automation already in the slides and I think it should be clear now based on my explanation on where cloud automation fits in, but let me give you a little bit more background and then a demo. Cloud automation is all about putting observability into the driving seat of your GitOps automation. Why did we build cloud automation? Well, you could have built everything yourself, but right? everything you've shown you, you could do pre-deployment checks in Jenkins. You can do pre and post-deployment checks in GitHub and in GitLab. Uh, Argo has webhooks. Uh, you can do all this yourself, but if you do and build this yourself, you end up 
with very complex scripts. That's what they, at least we have seen in turn also with our customers. Yes, these tools are out there, but if you try to embed this in every single GitOps project, you have a lot of copy pasting, you have a lot of code duplication. And if you not only have one microservice, but hundreds of microservices, this may escalate rather quickly. Like we have here from a, pro, from a reference story that I've been using for the last couple of months, Christian Heckelmann, uh, who ran into this situation because classical automation provides a lot of great options, but is a little bit limited when it comes to integrating these new event-driven concepts where you are pulling in data and letting observability make decisions for you. So this is where now Dynatrace Cloud Automation comes in. Dynatrace Cloud Automation puts your SLOs at the center. That means we allow you to define SLOs to describe the business desired state of your cloud native apps and also infrastructure because SLOs are not only for availability and response time and user adoption. While this is very important to start from the top, you can also define it across the stack. So you define SLOs and Dynatrace is constantly monitoring it. Dynatrace though really acts on GitOps changes, right? If you have Argo or Jenkins um, detecting a change that should be applied, or if Dynatrace detects a problem, Dynatrace then orchestrates your delivery process. So instead of just leaving it all to Jenkins or Argo, Dynatrace Cloud Automation takes control, does pre-deployment assessments, does the deployment, maybe execute some tests, does a post-deployment validation and then potentially promote it. And for the operational use case for day one and day two operations, if Dynatrace detects a problem, either an anomaly, an SLO evaluation, a security problem, then Dynatrace again assesses the situation, collects all the evidence, and then triggers the right tools to then change the technical desired state again to bring the system back to its desired state and then also validate if the business desired state is met. On top of all of this, Dynatrace does not replace your point tools, your DevOps tools, but it connects to any existing DevOps tools for delivery test notification, ticketing and configuration management. And we're doing this through open standards. One of the benefits of innovating this new approach to GitOps through the CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and through the open source project Captain, is that we are also driving a new standard that is centered around cloud events. They're actually called CD events, but it's really about defining a new event standard that is recognized by all tools so that you can easily integrate and orchestrate your tools, even though right now they may all have different APIs, different ways of connecting them and calling them and waiting for feedback. We're now driving an open standard that makes it easy for you to connect all of these tools. Yet put observability into the driving seat, which in the end, as you can see on the bottom left, what you've seen is 90% less automation code. This is really what this is all about because you cannot simply afford to hire more automation engineers that maintain very complex automation scripts that have not been built for the cloud native world. Now, let me go into a quick demo. This demo is about Argo CD, Dynatrace and cloud automation. And cloud automation, as I said, some of the stuff that I will show you today is based on the open source project Captain. And so that you actually see that it's both, uh, it's just kind of uh, the core technology is the same. I will actually use Captain for this. But the point is, that the same use case I showed earlier with the pre-deployment, with the deploy notification, the applying and the post-deployment is what I wanna show you right now. All right, let's walk over, quick demo. Let me switch to my other screen. Here we go. So what do I have here? I have, first of all, Argo, right? For those of you that don't know Argo, don't worry. Most of you probably know Argo because it is and has become a very popular uh, GitOps tool. Uh, different projects here that um, we have hooked up to Git repositories. That means every time there is a change in Git, every time I'm changing a configuration, let's say every time I say I want to deploy a different version of my app, I switch from one version to another, Argo will pick it up and will say it doesn't out of sync. The way we have set up the demo though is not letting Argo directly deploy, but really have Dynatrace, Cloud Automation or Captain in this case, interject. 
So what you can see here is what we call a delivery sequence. It has three sections, pre-deployment, deployment, and post-deployment. So initially, Argo, right? you can see your Argo CD was sending a cloud event to Captain, triggering the pre-deployment stage of my sequence, giving us additional information about who, which Argo instance, what type of version, and so on and so forth. Then our automation was executing the sequences, the pre-deployment checks. Remember, this is where you could do things like check your error budget, validate your health of the environment you want to uh, deploy into. And if everything is green, great. If not, maybe ask for a manual approval, but you can also mix. You can always approve, let manual approval uh, happen or automatically approve in case everything is green. The point is, you have a pre-deployment validation. Then we go into the deployment phase where, and I think this is also really nice, deployment is not limited to just deploying uh, software, new pods, new versions, but maybe your change also requires some infrastructure changes. Maybe you need to deploy a new database. Maybe you need to deploy a new server somewhere with some third-party components. So we can trigger here infrastructure changes as well, whatever your tool, whatever tool you have um, uh, that you use for infrastructure automation. Then once this is done, trigger the delivery where we actually go back to Argo and let Argo do its job where it's really good in, in applying that change from Git to the target system. And once Argo is done, it just responds back with the finish. But remember, this is not over. After the deployment, we go into the post-deployment phase where, and you can define this again yourself, maybe run initially some tests. In this case, we are running some K6 test. This is a load testing tool that runs test against the just newly deployed version of the app. Then have the evaluation kick in. This is really the core, right? Evaluating your SLIs and SLOs, response time throughput, error rate. You can configure the SLIs and SLOs as part of a Git repository. We have our own SLO YAML definitions here where you can specify pass and warning criteria, different weights, and also whether individual um, SLIs are key SLIs, yes or no. And then it will be evaluated and a total score will be given. Now, if I go back here, right? So we did the post-deployment, we did the test, we did the evaluation. If everything is good, it will, for instance, promote that change to the next phase. Maybe it promotes that version change into the next Git repository for your next stage through a pull request. Promote, however, could also mean just give a notification to the development team in Slack or in MS Teams, just notifying them that, hey, it would be good to promote, right? The level of automation is completely up to you. The point though is that we are bringing truly GitOps to the next level. And if I go back quickly to my slides to kind of finish this, we are elevating this from technical desired state management to business desired state management by giving the power to your observability because the observability is really what knows whether your system is running as expected. And if it's not running as expected, you want the system to come back to its desired state. And desired does not mean if you have five VMs running or 10 pods running, desired means that your end users can use your software as defined as part of your SLOs. So with this, I think what we do as Dynatrace, we can help you to deploy faster, to release better quality and to increase the delivery speed. And I think you can see here by the numbers, these are some of the things we have seen with our customers and users that have already implemented it. Better quality leads to reduced MTTR, more automation leads to reduced MTTR, better quality, better quality and better automation really uh, results in also increased speed of app delivery. That's what it is. Thank you so much and hopefully this was useful and hopefully you get inspired by doing something more than just the GitOps that you know. Thank you.